All right, welcome back. Today I have Sundip with me. Uh, Sundip is a developer advocate. Uh, what does a developer advocate do? Yeah, so uh, developer advocates at Google, and I think at a lot of other places, are engineers who get to engage with the community. So they get to participate by speaking at conferences, writing like cool documentation, code samples, basically giving back, and also learning from the community, like developers and operators, and using that to improve products. I see, so they're not like marketing people. No, it's, it's they're very much intended to be like, you know, engineers who have come from that ecosystem or that environment. So former developers, operators, specifically within Kubernetes, like, you know, definitely cluster operators, you know, sysadmins, DevOps, those kinds of folks, that kind of background. Awesome. So what exactly does a developer advocate do in the Kubernetes ecosystem? What yeah, kind of things are you involved in? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, it, the, the name is sort of funny because uh, I think developer advocate implies developer only when really within the Kubernetes ecosystem, it's developer, DevOps, pure ops and kind of further and further down the stack. So with within the Kubernetes ecosystem, I think people are getting to participate by one helping build like better, you know, kind of code samples around just using Kubernetes for operators, but also going further and further up the stack with new projects and tools that are very developer centric, which Kubernetes by itself is not a developer facing tool in a lot of ways. Awesome. So like walk me through an average day for you. Yeah, so uh, a lot of it really is well one Nonstop email checking <laughs> and uh, group chat participation, uh, and then uh, you know filing bug reports on products uh, that are part of Google Cloud, writing code samples, writing documentation, updating code samples and documentation because those get out of date very quickly, and answering PRs on GitHub and helping merge in new code. So I'm sure everyone is dying to know how many Slack channels are you a part of. Uh, <laughs> that's a number I will never share publicly because it would frighten and confuse most people. <laughs> so. Uh, um, you said you work a lot with the ecosystem. Like, yeah. what are some really exciting ecosystem uh, tools and, and kind of patterns that are emerging that you're excited about personally? Yeah, no, I mean, I think what's really cool is I was at the first KubeCon back in 2015 when it was 300 people in one room in the Palace Hotel, and it's grown incredibly since that time in like the last three and a half years. And what's really cool is it's gone further and further up. So we're getting closer and closer to like end application developers. So I'm really excited about the things that make application developers' lives easier. Um, so some of the really cool tools, a little bit self-serving because they're Google tools that we're working on, but like I think Scaffold and Jib are really cool tools. I think, and then something like Knative, which isn't exactly developer facing, but it's a project which is going to make it easier for application developers to get a lot of these cool benefits without having to write you know, YAML and remember V1 beta 1 or V1 alpha 1 APIs. Exactly. Um, so let's say I'm new to the Kubernetes community, right? Yep. You said 300, we're at like what, 8,000 yeah. people at this conference? The community is growing dramatically. If I'm new to this thing, where do I start? Where are some areas that I can make an impact? Uh, maybe even if I don't have a background in software or, or computer science. Yeah, I, you know, everybody has a unique experience to bring, which is what I found. And just hearing talks from across you know, the community today and the last couple of days at KubeCon, Everybody's got something compelling to share. I think you know there's a tons of getting started resources out there, but there's not as there's never enough like applied use case. So taking the experience that you've had, even if it was without Kubernetes, and saying, well, how would I map that to a Kubernetes environment or you know an environment with Istio or with any of the other thousands of tools that are out there, you know, rethinking through that and then sharing that story is still pretty valuable because I think it helps everybody try to map something new in their brain. I just went to a session that was about PCI compliance, right? So processing credit card data, something we've been doing for years in other in traditional environments, but not as much in Kubernetes, and that's really valuable for the community to learn. Awesome. So share stories. Right? Yeah, exactly. Share stories and and it doesn't have to be code, it doesn't have to be an innovative thing. It just has to be something that's I think positive and helping move the community forward. And that could just be a simple thing that you've learned that you want to share. Awesome. Well thank you, Sundip. All right. Thank you.